For decades, Jaguar has battled to stay relevant in an ever-shifting automotive landscape. Now, the Mark faces its greatest challenge yet as it transforms from a luxury saloon builder into a high-end SUV manufacturer. We started that journey and it was quite challenging to say the least, not really knowing where it would end up. To survive, the brand introduces its very first SUV, the F-Pace. The F-Pace really is the coming out party, the bell of the ball and debutante. This is it. We're back. This is us. Stop looking the other way. The machine is an immediate sensation, propelling Jaguar sales 83% higher in a single year. The F-Pace is 50% of Jag sales. That means that the F-Pace is selling as much as the XE, the XF, the XJ, and the F-Type combined. That is a salesman's dream. You hope for that kind of thing, and then you hope that it never, ever goes away, because that completely changes your company. Few places showcase the change quite like the Solly Hull Factory Body Shop, which is capable of producing a brand new F-Pace shell every 84 seconds. It starts when we put a simple barcode on the bumper beam of the underbody, and then it works its way through the line, having all the parts applied to it. They've been building aluminum cars for a while, and they're into the lightweight benefits that that provides. The use of aluminum differentiates JAG while also hiding a powerful eco-secret. One third of the machine's weight is comprised of recycled metal. We also use an awful lot of recycled aluminum in our products, and 80% of all aluminum that's been produced around the world is still in use today, so it's a fantastic material for us to use. The use of recycled aluminum helps the F-Pace shave weight, but also saves the planet. Reusing the metal requires 95% less energy than producing it from scratch. We're in our underbody area at the moment, so we have the front of the underbody, the middle section, and the rear end. Each body shell is comprised of 354 individual parts, and each one is riveted and glued. Six hundred sixty robots in the facility is total, which apply two thousand six hundred rivets using three hundred rivet guns. The rivets hold the pieces in place, but it's the one hundred and fifty-three meters of adhesive that actually join the parts together. So we have rivets that hold the part in position, and the adhesive that gives it the structural integrity. With the underbody completed, it's time to add the side panels. They start with the inner structural components. The underbody now is coming to the first framing station, and the body side inners will be applied by the robot. Once the inner supports are in place, another set of robots adds the sexy exterior curves. So we're on our Framer 2 line at the moment, so this is where the body side outer is now applied to the car. The robots aren't the only high-tech tools. Even loading the side panels is advanced. This is one of our latest pieces of technology we've introduced into the body shop. This loads up our body side pallets to the load window, so no human interaction needed. The parts come from the press shop, already in the pallet as a single part. The AGV goes and collects the pallet, delivers it to the line. The AGV, or automated guide vehicle, ensures a constant flow of parts. So we basically go from the press shop all the way through into our facility without another person touching it until we see it and inspect it on the end of line. Once the pallet arrives, another robot picks up a panel and adds the adhesive. So on this screen here, we can tell where the adhesive is being applied. The green tells us that we've got the correct quantity in the correct position, and that is measured on every single car. 
Once the exterior side panel is glued, it's moved into position and permanently riveted into place. Aluminium isn't the only thing joined inside the body shop. Lynn came into the business to work for me when I was a group leader, and I suppose the relationship just flourished from there. Three years on, and uh, she's ready to pop. Yes, it's fun. I think he might be a little bit harder on me than he is on anybody else. We spent great time together and then got home together. The boss at home, I'm the boss at work. Yeah. Yeah, simple <laughs> At Solly Hull, family connections run deep. There's a lot of family inheritance. It's quite nice to know that your parents have worked here, or even your grandparents have worked here, and it does make it quite a family feel about it. My father worked here as a toolmaker, and I was an apprentice in the same section that he worked. A lot of people have family who worked here, brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, and children. My granddad's worked here most of his life, and this is the job that ultimately gave them the house and lifestyle that they had, my nan and granddad and it seems to be doing the same for me. The familial links help with morale, but they don't always fill the ranks. Finding qualified tradespeople is increasingly difficult. Now, I think we went through a phase where it wasn't fashionable to be in manufacturing. Some of those missing skills come from explosive places. Yeah, I was in the British Army for six years, toured Iraq and Afghanistan. Ex-military guys who have joined us have been very important filling that skills gap. It was daunting, to say the least. However, there's such a well-versed process in place for welcoming new people, and you go through the transitional period of training until you're comfortable and safe on your job. Safety and comfort often lead to passion and pride. I, I love it personally, how anybody could not be proud having a hand in building these pieces of art. I think it gives you some satisfaction seeing the products that you produce, driving around on the roads with families in it. It really gives you an exciting buzz about the job you do. These days, the steadiest hum is the sound of finished body shells being sent across the Sully Hull campus to the paint shop. We're in the paint shop. We have a car going through here every 1.6 minutes. First, the bare shells are prime. We have five different colours of primers, which you can see examples of as they're coming through the booth. Next, the body heads to the base coat zone. We have two sets of robots applying base coat. One robot covers 70% of the vehicle, while the other robot spins paint at a higher speed to randomize the application. Working in unison, they paint the exteriors in one of 25 different standard colors. So all of the base coat and clear coat robots are electrostatic, so we charge the air around it to try and drive the paint towards the car. The robotic heads spin the electrically charged paint up to 70,000 revolutions per minute. Once the robots are done, dedicated craftspeople paint the interior by hand. And we're now into the clear coat zone. So similar to base coat, manual application on our interiors. Uh, exteriors done by the same type of robots. The shells head to the quality control line, where another set of artisans ensures that the paint job is flawless. Then it's time to send a finished body to the assembly hall where the most unlikely Jaguar ever will come to life in a matter of hours.